Hey guys, it's Ryan of Phoenix Winch. Today I'm going to show you how to take the governor out of a Honda clone engine. This is basically a life fan or a Greyhound that you get over at Harbor Freight. And uh, you'll have to forgive the mess around the house and whatnot. Now this is uh, the engine with the gas tank already taken off. Uh, I've also taken off the air filter, taken out the spark plug and the uh, valve cover because I'm going to replace those springs here in a minute. So the first thing I want to do is take a number 10 metric. Now I'm going to take this arm off here that controls the governor down in there. So this guy should come off pretty easy. And we're not going to end up needing you know, any of this linkage that's going on up on top of the, uh, the flywheel here. This should come off pretty easy. Doesn't hurt to uh, smack it a little bit if you need to. So you're not gonna, not gonna need that anymore. So for the time being, I'm just gonna let that hang out over there. There's a little safety pin over here. Just work this guy off. Woo! Little washer. All right. So basically, we've just got that arm exposed right there. That's this little guy right here that controls the governor. And then what I'm going to do is put this engine on its side. I'm going to go ahead and open up the case. This is also a number 10. Now these uh, bolts should be torqued to about 17 foot-pounds. A little bit of force to get them off. fast brake prevents the engine from spinning too much and you may not be able to see it but I've got the engine resting on a piece of pretty thick cardboard so I don't scratch it up oh you'll need to take the little protective sleeve off the shaft take the key out as well For that matter I've got cardboard all over the table here so I don't get oil on everything And the hardware that comes off the top arm there, you don't need it. I basically keep a pile of what I refer to as obsolete hardware, but you never know when you might need it down the road. So hang on to it. And it's important to try and keep an organized mess while you're doing this so that you can easily find all your components as you put it back together. Now basically this thing should just lift right off of here and you want to come off as straight as you can and then you'll see you've got your ball bearings in there to support the shaft, your oil gauge and uh, just set that guy off to the side. So now we're looking right down into the belly of the beast. This is kind of interesting. Our governor is back here in black and you can see the little arm. Now a lot of guys will cut this off right here and then push it through. I'm pretty comfortable hammering it through. So basically we just need to get this guy out of here, we need to get this gear out of here, and I'll do the best I can to show you how that works. So what I'm going to do is turn this piston, maybe, so that I've got maximum clearance down there. Now you can see the governor pretty well. Those bushes are going to kill us here. And I've definitely had luck in the past hammering that little arm through, simply using a skinny bolt to push it through.
if you can come across an extra set of hands throughout this process, it's very helpful. And I need a longer bolt to push that through. Let's hope I've got something laying around over here. <laughs> oh, come on. shot that arm out. Of course it's down caught by the oil sensor. You definitely need to get this out of here or you will have a lot of problems when you fire up this engine. little problem to have but a problem nonetheless and there it is so he's out what are we left with we have our governor exposed and you'll see these little tabs open up kind of like a lotus flower we can pull off this little guy I'm gonna make sure that washer comes with it set that over there and so basically, maybe hard to see, but we've got this little arm and there's a little lock washer around it at the base that holds the governor gear in place. A couple of different ways you can do it. If you can find a way to grab that gear, you can pull it out. Uh, looks like they actually put a washer up here too. We definitely want to make sure we get this guy. Don't want anything loose floating around inside the engine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a screwdriver, different screwdriver, and I'm going to get it up a flathead. I'm going to get it right up against that little lock ring. And then I'm just going to pound the screwdriver with a hammer. And it works. All right, I'm back. My hammer and screwdriver is kind of hard to see in here. But I'm just going to move around that ring, pound it like so, making sure each time that I am on the ring. And it's coming loose. Believe me, this gets a lot easier the more times you do it. Kind of learn as you go. That ring is definitely opening up. What I really want to do is clear it out of the channel. While you're doing this, you want to make sure not to damage your gasket around here. Otherwise, you've got to order a replacement. And that's not fun. looking pretty beat up. Let's see if we can't pull it out at this time. Not yet. And as you break off little pieces of that plastic, be sure you discard them. Don't let them float around inside the case here. show you. Hopefully you can see the, the little ring down there is starting to get pretty torn up. Am 
by the time I'm done with this, if there is any broken little plastic bits down in here, I'll just get the shop back and vacuum it out. Just think of it as debris in your engine oil. You don't want that. I sound a little groggy. I just woke up. I'm just feeling motivated to rip out a governor. Once you've kind of worked around this ring, if you really attack the place where it opens up, it really starts to lose its grip. No dice yet. I would love to know what the manual says about removing this governor. You may notice throughout this process I'm not removing the shaft. Um, or this uh, gear here, I forget what it's called. Uh, I don't want to mess up the alignment, but even if you do, you've got these two dots that just need to line up when the gears mesh together. Is that a camshaft? I don't know, I don't really care. But I am getting tired of beating on this ring. It's certainly loose from its spot on the shaft. And you'll find a little bit of patience goes a long way with this process as well. Well, that was less than desirable. Luckily, that is not a magnet. Basically, there's just a little rod that holds those in place. And that just fell down in there. But I can see it. And look at that, I got it. Can't stress enough, be very conscious of little pieces floating around inside the engine case. I've about had my fun with this, to be honest. But the show must go on. Okay, we got him. See how beat up that is? Now there is a little washer that resides behind that governor. You see got a little bit of debris in there. So I'm gonna get that washer out and then I'm gonna run the shop back on it. I'll try just this magnetic tip screwdriver. Kind of lifting, but there's a little bit of bond from the engine oil. So I'll just come back to my screwdriver and just gently pry that up. Just 
you get two tools in here, it's going to help. Obviously everything's a little slippery in there because of the engine oil. That's something you want to be aware of when you open the case as well. You don't want a little bit of oil that's in here from the manufacturer getting all over your stuff. So you can see now it's all cleaned out except for those little pieces of broken plastic. So let me grab the shop back and get that cleaned out. All right, the case has been vacuumed out, so it's nice and clean in there. As you can see, basically we start the uh, putting it back together process. And again, just be careful throughout this. You don't damage the uh, gasket. You know, the Harbor Freight replacement's only about a dollar, but they take forever to show up. Portable go parts has them for about five bucks. Much faster turnaround. And another important thing to note, you don't want to fire up this engine before you attempt to remove the governor. Because if you do that, then you have to replace the gasket. Once this engine's gotten hot, you cannot use the same gasket after you open up the case. I've learned that the hard way. So you don't have to. Now, where'd my napkin go? elusive napkin. Okay. There's a couple of pins here just to make sure you get those lined up properly. Just go slow. Don't knock your bearings out. That support the shaft. Look at that that right down on there. I'm going to just hand thread these for now. Like I mentioned before, these go on with 17 foot-pounds. Grab my torque wrench and we'll get this case locked back up. All right, go ahead and hand tighten these. Now just similar to a, uh, a car wheel, we're going to alternate these bolts as we tighten them down. And what I'm going to do is just use the regular socket wrench, go ahead and get them tight. Or snug, I should say. Notice I'm skipping as I go. But, since it's an even number, if I skip this, I'll be back there. So I'm going to skip two. Going back to skipping one. Got the torque wrench, got it set to 17 foot pounds. Just want to go until it clicks. I may have been past 17 already. back together. Now we still have this hole on the top of the engine where we took out the uh, this little arm. And what I'm going to do is take a quarter inch self-tapping bolt, uh, 20 thread count, and I'm just uh, probably about an inch long. And I'm just going to self-tap it in there. And so then that leaves us with this mess from the throttle linkage. 
basically what I'm going to do here is take these springs off. I will eventually. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to take this rod, I'm going to cut it, I'm going to put a bolt through here, and then I'm going to go ahead and shave some of this metal off this bottom plate. Then I'm going to do a direct linkage, and hopefully you've seen the other video with that completely assembled. Hey, thanks for watching. Get out there and mod those engines.